What's happening guys, Paul Friedman coming at you. Today we're gonna to be talking about wedding photography and most specifically, our short list of must-have items as a wedding photographer. Let's jump in. All right guys, so today we're gonna to be talking about our hit list of items that you absolutely need to photograph on a wedding day. I'm gonna to try to keep this one brief, but we got about 40 or 50 things to talk about, uh, so I'm just gonna be diving straight through. First and foremost, obviously, I hope everybody's doing well. I hope everyone's staying safe and staying sane during this lockdown time. Uh, COVID-19 is obviously affecting wedding season, so for all brides and grooms out there, stay calm, and I promise we will absolutely get through this. To all photographers, make sure you communicate with your brides and grooms and their families and make sure that you set their minds at ease because this is a very stressful time. As someone who's personally engaged to get married this summer, obviously I can feel your pain. I know it's stressful, but we will get through all of this together. And uh, for everyone who has hired us to be your wedding photographer, remember we are your photographers through thick and thin. If you need to reschedule, we will still be there for you. So without further ado, to all my fellow wedding photographers, these are the things that I think you absolutely need to get on the wedding day. So first thing, right, bright and early in the morning, start getting creative with some detail shots. That means invitations, that means jewelry, bridesmaids, gifts, any cultural custom items that might be involved, watches, shoes, ties, groomsmen gifts, bridesmaid gifts, all that good stuff. Make sure you're just getting creative, whether it's you know laying everything out in a creative way and doing a lay flat top down photo of everything all at once, or it's each individualized item. Um, Obviously, if you guys are trying to get published as wedding photographers, all the details will matter. If you're just trying to keep your brides and grooms happy, then just stick to people and just, you know, get a one big shot of all their details to help them remember the things that they chose to do on the big day. So uh, details. Uh, the dress shot is really important, we think, in the morning. This is something that you really need to start thinking about early in the day um, because you certainly don't want to like hold up the schedule just for a shot of the dress. Um, most people's attitude is, why do you need a photo of the dress if the bride's going to be wearing it later? But it's just kind of a nice thing to have, and if you can get creative with it, it can be kind of cool. And the same thing is true with the groom's, uh, you know, clothing items, whether it's just his tie, his shoes, and his watch, or whether you get the full suit and all that good stuff, whatever it might be, uh, usually what we like to do is just the few things that sort of set them apart. So everybody's gonna be wearing a nice shirt and some slacks. We don't photograph those, but whatever shoes or watch they chose, we like to just get some of those details early in the morning, as well as a shot of the rings. Uh, this is something that most wedding photographers do. This is something that most couples want. Some couples aren't so interested, um, but once they've put the rings on, they do not wanna take them off again. So try to get this done in the morning early, find out whether it's the best man or whether it's the mother of the bride, whoever has the rings, try to grab them from them. Uh, obviously, you know, try to set their mind at ease as you walk off with their rings, but uh, try to get something decent if you can. A nice shot of the rings can go a long way uh, for a portfolio and sometimes, uh, you know, vendors, including jewelers, like to have these shots and they will recommend you later if you have something decent to show them. Um, then it's just the festivities in the morning. It's the bride getting her hair and makeup done. Uh, it's the, you know, all the bridesmaids cheering a glass of champagne and orange juice. You know, mimosas are usually flowing uh, for the guys traditionally. Uh, there's no like specific item, but very commonly we see them all cheersing a glass of whiskey together, whatever it might be, whether they're not, whether they're drinking or whether they're just eating some snacks or whatever their morning festivities include. Uh, try to just get a few shots of them sort of enjoying that morning. And this is also an opportunity to, as a photographer, to start getting creative and get some of the nerves out of the way, you know? So, you know, generally speaking, it's hard to get in the mindset of a photographer if you just jump in and hit the ground running, but this is a nice slow introduction to the day. And then, getting the dress on. That's a huge step. Um, Spencer and I are both men, so we don't, you know, obviously usually stay in the room while they're changing, but, uh, you know, just for the last few buttons, we usually have them sort of invite us in and we can get a few shots of, you know, whether it's the mother of the bride or the maid of honor or her sisters or whoever is just helping her get the dress on. Uh, guys, you know, everything buttons in the front, so they don't usually need help, but a couple shots of them tying their shoes or adjusting their tie in the mirror or something like that. Just nice to sort of help tell the story in the album later. So get some of those. And then very important guys, make sure you get a photo of uh, the bride 
in the morning and a groom in the morning. It doesn't need to be a super formal portrait. You don't need to take tons of time and get all the lighting just right. Um, maybe you just have them stand next to the window and look out the window and smile. Whatever it might be, it might even be a candid shot they didn't even know you were taking. But just get one devoted shot of the bride and one devoted shot of the groom in the morning. And then another, obviously you wanna get a, a photo of all the all the girls and all the guys or whatever their wedding parties might be. We're seeing more and more mixed parties, so it's the uh, you know the bride's people and the groom's people. Uh, so it doesn't necessarily have to be all bridesmaids in their dresses, but whatever group they get ready with, try to get a photo of them with all of their you know with all their close friends and family and uh, whoever they enjoyed the morning with. That's kind of important. Uh, sometimes parents are involved and things like that. So sometimes they do or don't want to be in the photos, but you just get a shot of all those people before you get going with the. Day. And then the next thing that you're going to probably get into is either a first look or a preparation for the ceremony. If they're going to do a first look, which is something we push for because it takes a lot of the pressure off throughout the day um, and it lets sort of the bride and groom get some of those nerves and excitement and emotions out without 200 people watching them. That's kind of a nice thing to do. We encourage it, but some people like to keep it a little more traditional and that's fine. So just these next few steps would just be cut and pasted below the ceremony. Um, but yeah, if you can do a first look, that's really great. Then you can also get the whole bridal party together get some of those photos going so that later when cocktail hour is happening you don't have to steal them away for quite so long and then sometimes you can even invite the family to the first look and start getting some of those family portraits out of the way before the ceremony uh, which is a nice thing to do so um, that's some of the photos you might be getting and then the next thing is the ceremony itself the ceremony is going to involve a few details. They spend a lot of time and money decorating, so make sure you snap a few close-ups and a few just like general details of the sort of the ceremony location before people arrive, if you can. Not a must, obviously. Uh, again, I think it's really important um, for the brides and grooms that you get more people, and then you know, just as a photographer, getting those details is how you're going to sort of get published and how you're going to make better relationships with uh, with the venues. So if you can try to get details and the ceremony location before people start arriving and then be ready for some candid shots as people start to arrive. You know, if it's a rainy day, people will be walking in with umbrellas. If it's a sunny day, they'll all be walking in with their sunglasses. Um, you know, just try to get some of that. It very well signifies sort of the mood of the day and, and how things are starting to pick up pace and get, you know, the excitement is starting to rise and you're going to start to see a lot of smiling faces, people who haven't seen each other in a long time. It's a great time to get some candidates right there and then get in position for the ceremony obviously uh, generally speaking you will see the groom first and then the groomsmen and then some family members whether it's mom and dad walking down the aisle or whoever uh, generally grandparents will walk in and then the bridesmaids will start to walk in and then the bride this is a super important shot the bride coming down the aisle is like such an iconic moment of the day some of the time father will be walking her in that's not always the case um, but if that's happening then generally there's a second next step where father will hand off the bride to the groom uh, that's a nice moment uh, them coming down the aisle is something that you know uh, uncle or aunt or whoever in the in the aisle in the um, seating can get those shots on their cell phone but if you can be right up front and get like a nice moment where the where the father is passing the bride off to the groom you know usually with some sort of handshake or hug or I've seen a high five before whatever it is um, just get that moment it's a really nice moment and it helps set you apart from everyone else speaking of the crowd uh, gaining popularity is actually uh, unplugged ceremonies and we really push for those I can't tell you how many really important shots have been ruined by somebody holding an iPad up over their head or somebody standing stepping out into the aisle during the first kiss. Those are really devastating moments as a photographer and the bride and groom do not want that to happen. So if you can explain to them ahead of time, hey, consider an unplugged ceremony, I think you'll appreciate it later. Um, you know, just, just think about it. You know, some people really push back on it and say, no, I want my family to take pictures and that's fine if they're going to, um, but something that you, you should think about as a photographer because it will help your day go a little smoother. That being said, if you tell everybody else to leave their cameras alone, you yourself are now on the hook for all those shots. So make sure you're snapping away, make sure you're thinking critically and getting all those moments. And speaking of moments, the first kiss. Do not miss the first kiss. If you get no other photos throughout the ceremony, if you get no creative shots, you don't circle around the ceremony, you don't walk over to the woods and get something, you know, with a long lens shooting through the trees. If you don't get, you know, behind the altar and get a shot of reactions of the crowd, um, 
whatever you get, get the first kiss, don't miss it. Sometimes it comes out of the blue. A lot of weddings these days aren't sort of that traditional 30 minute Catholic mass anymore. It's just like a friend or a family member uh, who's probably kind of winging it. You know, maybe they practiced, but it might be their first or second time. And, and the, I now pronounce you, you may kiss the bride moment could just come out of the blue. So make sure you're just like aware of the general length of time they expect to have this ceremony be. If you can be there for the, uh, for the rehearsal, that's really cool and that'll really help you out a lot, but you know, we can't always do that for traveling distances and things like that. So um, just be there for the first kiss, just be ready, get that shot. And if you have a second shooter, maybe just post them up and make sure they don't leave the aisle ever. So they're always gonna get the first kiss. Um, that's the kind of stuff that you need to make sure you get. And then walking back down the aisles, I, I don't know if it's equally as important, but it's very important and it's a lot of fun. Uh, we generally shoot this one from the hip low with a wide angle lens and we just walk backwards with them. Uh, Spencer and I team up where one of us is sort of checking our backs and like walking backwards and guiding each other. We're both usually shooting so that someone got the photo, but there's a lot of excitement happening. Tons of smiling faces, hands are in the air, hands are clapping. Uh, maybe they're throwing rice or blowing bubbles, whatever it might be. Um, but this is a really fun, energetic, exciting moment and during the ceremony. Just after that moment, there will be this time where uh, nobody has anywhere to go and they're just gonna like congregate somewhere and then the whole bridal party will come in and there's just gonna be hugs and kisses and handshakes and excitement and the family might get involved as well. Um, this is a really exciting time to shoot some candids. There's again, tons of emotion going on here. Try to just be ready for that and try to get some of those shots because they're really nice moments. Um, and then also at that time, you need to start thinking ahead to group portraits. Um, if you didn't do the first look and you didn't get a lot of those family and group portraits done ahead of time, this is when you need to get it done. And being efficient is gonna be the name of the game because generally speaking, cocktail hour starts now. And if you take a long time to do the family portraits, that means that family and bridal party and bride and groom don't make it to the cocktail hour. And that's devastating. So, you know, sort of just have that stuff ready. Um, I usually encourage a cocktail two hours if they're willing to do that. And then you have, you know, that hour of leeway with photos and you can, and then you can still get them to the cocktail hour, which gives you time to shoot some candids and get ready for the reception, things like that. But if they insist on a cocktail one hour and they don't want to do a first look, efficiency is going to be the name of the game with family portraits. And beyond that, planning in advance is really important. Talk to your bride and groom and have them pre-decide who they want in each photo. Because if they're just thinking about it on the spot, not only is it gonna take twice as long or three times as long, but they will inevitably forget one combination. And uh, you know, we've even had people pull us aside early in our career and say, hey, we didn't get a shot with our grandparents. Can you come do that now? Um, and you know, luckily, you know, we had time, we went, we got the shots, but um, that was sort of the turning point in our uh, wedding photography career where we sort of made sure, okay, what are the things we need to nail down? And one of them is, you know, getting those pre-decided group shots is really important, both to us and to the couples. Um, if you can, get candids at the cocktail hour. It's just a very casual time. Again, this is probably the first time everybody's seen each other in a long time. People are traveling from afar and uh, you know, family and friends are all intermingling. Some people have never even met. So there's a lot of fun interactions going on at this point. And if you can capture some of those moments, um, you know, that's a really great time to do that. And then also maybe if you can sneak into the reception hall before everyone else gets there to sort of capture some of those details, this is a good time to do that too. Cocktail hour sometimes gives you a lot of free time. You can start getting pretty creative. So get in there, get a photo of, uh, you know, whether it's the table settings or the centerpieces um, or just a big wide of the whole place. Uh, also a good time to talk to the DJ about the, you know, his idea of the schedule. Obviously you've gotten a copy of the schedule from the couple, um, but what the DJ got might not line up with what you got. So time, good time to collaborate with them. And also uh, make sure you hit the dessert table. Um, and by hit the dessert table, I mean, get lots of photographs of it. They put a lot of time and money into this. Some people do huge custom handmade wedding cakes. Some people will do, uh, you know, custom wooden carved um, platform tables that they put all like, you know, all bunch of handmade cupcakes all over, whether it's cupcakes or whether it's donuts or whatever it might be, get the dessert table. They put a lot of time and effort into these most of the time. Um, and it can be really colorful and fun. Make for some good photos. Make sure you get those. And then, uh, and then again, coordinating with the DJ because introductions is going to be the next step. Everyone's going to sort of 
enter into the reception area. You can snap a few candidates while they find their seats. Um, make sure you've gotten the seating card chart. If they have a big poster, do that before people get in there. Because once cards start going missing, that, that shot's kind of ruined. I mean, you can still get it, but it's not as good. Um, but yeah, then people will sort of mingle on in there. And then introductions. The formal introductions with the DJ can be the hardest part of the day for us. And I don't think it's a super necessary part, but if you plan on doing it, just be aware that even if they say they're gonna walk to the third table, take a right, then go two tables, then turn left, get out on the dance floor, do a move and then sit down, they probably won't do what they said they were gonna do. They're gonna get excited, they're gonna go five tables to the left and then along the back wall and then they're gonna do a, you know, whatever and go fist bump to DJ and then front flip off the stage or who knows what they're gonna do, but it's probably not gonna be what you think they're gonna do. So just be ready, be on your feet, be, you know, remain adaptable and uh, and try to snap a few shots during the introductions. Again, I don't think it's super important. Um, however, sometimes introductions go straight into the first dance. And not that this is the first kiss, it's the first dance, but it's almost as important. You have to get a good photo of the first dance. Um, and you know, th this is sort of the one thing I think that can go um, terribly off the rails in terms of scheduling because we've had people say they were gonna do uh, you know, five different events and then dinner and then cake cutting and then the first dance. But then during introductions, they were just feeling it and they pointed at the DJ and he clicked play and all of a sudden first dance was happening and we were like, whoa, what's happening? So just like be, be aware that that can just happen and just be ready, be on your feet and, and you know, be prepared for that first dance. And then there's games, cake cutting, uh, special dances, you know, whether it's the anniversary dance, the parent dances or whatever they might be. Um, and then just dancing the night away. Um, and then also, you know, throughout the day at some point, think about a signature move or a signature shot that you want. Spencer and I are landscape and nightscape photographers. And so naturally we really, really enjoy incorporating one night photo into each wedding day. So what we'll do is as people are dancing the night away and starts to get dark, if it's, a, if it's a beautiful sunset, we'll pull them out for a sunset and that might serve as our late night shot. Um, but if there's no stunning sunset or if timing doesn't work out and everybody's eating during the sunset, we'll pull them out at night and just sort of get some, you know, some lighting figured out, put the camera on a tripod and get creative. Um, but the key to doing it for us at least is making sure the shot is all lined up and ready to go before you pull them away from the party. And then it's just a quick five minutes. And usually they're pretty happy for it because they've been dancing for a little while and they haven't been alone since they got married. You know, they get married and it's just 200 people around them constantly. So sometimes they'll actually value that. So uh, that's sort of become one of our little niche items. Make sure you guys find some sort of signature thing to add to your portfolio, which is kind of cool like that. Um, and make sure it, you know, you make it your own. Make sure you sort of fall back on your own experiences and think about, you know, what is it that's gonna, you know, maybe you're a macro photographer, so you get awesome ring photos or, you know, whatever it might be. Uh, so I hope this was helpful, you guys. Again, this video probably went a little longer than I wanted it to, but the list is long and I wanted to, to hit on all these items. I hope you found it helpful if you guys are wedding photographers out there and you're just trying to think you know, critically through your own wedding day and figure out what it is that you need to be capturing. So uh, yeah, again, to all our couples that we've shot in the past, we still remember you, we still think about you a lot and we appreciate you trusting us. For all the people who are coming up, this year's gonna be a little crazy and we are here for you guys. You know, Reach out with any questions we definitely want to be we're going to remain adaptable and make sure that you know whatever we need to do to, to be there for you guys we're going to do that um, and to all the fellow wedding photographers out there uh, be thinking about that yourself as well you know try to put yourself in the shoes of your couples and and uh, and try to you know think about what would I want if I was getting married this day so uh, again if you guys like this video give it a thumbs up if you have any comments questions concerns or suggestions leave them in the comment section down below click that subscribe button to see more and we will catch you all next time again I'm Paul this is Main Mount Media and we'll see you